How Swim Fins Work The modern design of the fin was invented by a lieutenant commander in the French Navy, Louis de Corlou. Inspired by how the webbed feet on frogs and ducks propel them through water, de Corlou designed wearable swim fins that work in a similar manner. He demonstrated his first prototype to the public in 1914, and later left the Navy to refine the design, patenting it in 1933. By 1939, the swimming and rescue propulsion device had entered mass production. Since then, the design of the humble swim fin has seen countless iterations, styles, and designs to suit many different kinds of activities, from snorkeling to scuba. But what made de Corlou's basic design from the early 1900s so effective? The basic function of the swim fin is to generate forward propulsion or thrust by exploiting the resistance of water against anything moving through it. That means anything moving through water has the potential to generate propulsion. For example, moving your legs up and down pushes the water off and around your feet, creating thrust. Thrust is the result of Newton's third law, which is often simplified to the catchy phrase, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So as your legs push water behind you, there is a corresponding force that pushes you forward. However, the human foot is not very well suited to moving large amounts of water. Compared to, say, a frog's webbed feet, the narrow human foot isn't very good at generating thrust. So what's the solution? Increase the surface area of your feet. Just like the webbed feet of a frog or the flippers of a sea lion, a wider, flatter area can move greater amounts of water. Thrust efficiency is how much of your kicking energy is converted to forward movement. Swim fins are designed to optimize your thrust efficiency. However, your kicking technique, leg strength, depth, and the equipment you're wearing all affect your thrust efficiency too. That means manufacturers typically design fins with specific activities in mind. A scuba diver won't use the same fins as a casual snorkeler, and a free diver will use something very different from either. Finding a good balance between stiffness and flexibility on the blade is an important engineering consideration in swim fin design. Flexibility allows the fin to scoop the water and add snap to the kick, but stiffness is also necessary for applying force to the water in the first place. Where the happy medium is depends, in part, on the length of the blade. Because long fins need to move more water, they experience greater resistance. A stiffer blade can handle that resistance without bending too much. Swim fins can also have special design features that improve thrust, comfort, and maneuverability. Channels and rails. Many fins feature bolsters, rails, and channels that have been engineered to encourage water to run off the fin's edge. Ensuring that water runs off the edge in one direction helps to reduce turbulence and improve thrust efficiency. More force applied into the water backwards means more forward motion for you. Curved edges. The broader the edge of the fin, the more surface area there is for water to run off it. That's why many fin designs feature a curved edge rather than a straight edge. More water moving off the fin means more thrust. These designs are often inspired by the shape of tail fins on fish and whales. Vents. A vent is any hole or opening in the fin blade. Vents allow some water to pass through the blade during the kick. This reduces the overall resistance of the water against the blade, making it easier to kick. If designed and positioned well, such vents will not overly compromise thrust. Want to know more about the physics of fins? Head over to tidetrek.com for my full article on the subject. Next time you're out with your dive buddies, maybe you can impress them with a bit of fin science. <laughs>